morning. Well, morning for me anyway. Um, so me and Indy are going up a walk this morning. And we're going to uh, just have a little look, see what interesting plants we can find from an um, edible or medicinal point of view. Um, it's not going to be a comprehensive guide, it's just going to be more of a quick fire round really. So uh, yeah, before I do us any more fervid, let's get on with it. Here we have a mint. Uh, the mint is uh, the Lamiaceae family and um, typical characteristics of the Lamiaceae family um, it has this square um, slightly hairy stem usually and the leaves come out in opposite uh, pairs and um, this one here is um, apple mint and uh, this one's um, very very fragrant very minty um, this can be used um, be cooked with added to sauces and stuff um, or drinks. It can also be steeped in um, boiling or hot water and used to make a, a tea which is um, good, it can calm the stomach and um, the digestive system particularly good um, if you suffer from something like IBS. Here we have some Rose Bay Willow Herb um, Chamarine Augustifolum. Sometimes it goes by the name of fireweed um, cause it's, or bombweed because it's often uh, the first plant to appear from where a fire has been or after the Second World War um, it used to appear from um, bomb sites. Um, it's, um, other than its big um, pink spiked flower head, um, before that comes into flower, one way of identifying it um, is a close inspection of the leaf. Um, you can see the, the veins, I don't know if you can see that, but the veins um, that run out from the central spine almost make it to the, the leaf edge and then do a bit of a U-turn and come back in on itself um, which is a good way of identifying it but um, typically these used to be um, fermented and made into tea um, but one nice thing you can do with this on the, the wayside is the stem can be split and um, in the center of the split um, the center of the stem is like um, a cucumbery textured uh, piff which tastes quite nice um, and I've heard of it being added to stews as a thickening agent as well um, so it's a good one to find. Where you do find it, it tends to grow uh, quite plentiful in big stands, um, as you can see here. This white flowered plant here is commonly known as yarrow. Um, it can grow up to a metre tall. Um, its Latin name, Achillea millifolium, refers to uh, the leaf, or the second part of the name does, millifolium. Milli meaning thousand and folium meaning uh, leaves. It gives, um, as you can see, thousand leaves it translates to, and you can see why they've called it that. Um, the structure is very feather like. And these leaves are edible, they have quite a floral kind of flavour to it, and traditionally were considered more of a medicinal, really, but they are quite nice in salads and um, can also be infused in alcohol and give, um, give that a nice flavour as well. This um, five petaled yellow flowered plant here. This is uh, St John's Wort. Now you may have seen this in the chemist or on a supermarket uh, shelf. St John's Wort is uh, a known uh, antidepressant um, and it's quite easily identified um, other than its yellow flower by taking one of its leaves and holding it up to the light and if you look through the bottom of the leaf um, you can see it has these tiny little um, holes in the bottom of the leaf. I don't know whether that's coming up or not. But yeah, this is definitely not an edible though. Um, if you eat this as it is, it's going to make you um, very depressed. And uh, yeah, it takes quite a lot of processing as well. So it's not something that most people uh, are going to be able to do, but it is, uh, is it interesting one though? Right, this plant here is called Alexander's. Uh, this is in the Apiaceae um, family, um, carrot or carrot family, sometimes still referred to as the umbelliferite, as it would have had like a, a large umbel like um, flower. Um, this one would have had a yellow flower or many flowers uh, making up the umbel on here. And uh, this, this family, the Apiaceae family, is quite one you really need to be careful when foraging. Um, you need to know all the ones. Um, that look similar to it as well as quite a few key identifying features um, for the one you know 
the one you're trying to identify. Um, but this one um, was brought over by the Romans as a um, as a food and a spice and uh, the stems um, can be eaten like celery, um, although they're very strong tasting and not to everyone's taste. Um, some people say it tastes like myrrh, but uh, I guess unless you're one of the wise kings or uh, the baby Jesus, you're not going to know what that tastes like. I've certainly never smelled myrrh. And uh, yeah, but the leaves they used to use for fodder uh, for the animals and uh, the root, the root is really good. Um, the root's like a large parsnip, it can be cooked um, like parsnip. Um, yeah, of course, I should point out it's illegal to pull up any um, wild plant uh, in the UK um, unless you're on private land with the owner's permission. Um, but at the moment, you say the flowers have gone, uh, the leaves have gone as well, which is one of the key identifying features. Um, this, what I'm showing you now, is not going to be enough by far. Um, to go out and start identifying it um, but what we are left with um, are these seeds and there's some black ones here and they're, they're really easy to gather you just grab them in your hand and you, you end up with um, quite a handful and you can use these um, like you would pepper peppercorns so they can be ground up and added to food um, they smell you know it smells the same the, the smell is a real dead giveaway on this as well you know if you as a once you've done all your key identifying features, which I haven't really covered, um, the smell is, is a definite giveaway on this one. So here's a wild carrot, um, sometimes known as Queen Anne's Lace. Um, this is in the uh, Apiaceae family, which is the carrot family. Um, and is, it, is it quite a, um, you have to be really careful when foraging for these, because there's quite a lot of its family members are very toxic. Um, and can prove to be fatal if you get it wrong. Um, but a couple of key identifying features, it has this small um, dark purple to range in right through to quite a light pale pink colour flower in the centre of the umbel. And it also has these, uh, these bracts underneath the umbel as well, um, which is quite distinctive. Also the flower, um, sorry, the leaf structure is very similar to that of um, a carrot which you'd grow back at home. And if you was to pull this up, which Obviously I'm not allowed to here, and um, you would smell that uh, the root on it smells strongly of carrot, and uh, yeah, it can be eaten. But once it's gone to flower, um, it's long gone really. Here we have black thorn, uh, Prunus spinosa, which is in the rose or rosaceae family. It has these um, slow berries, as they're referred to normally. They're Add them to gin. I've also made wine out of them. They make a, a really good wine. These are not ripe yet. Um, they do need to be processed really. If you try eating them um, straight off the tree, they're it, you know they're very bitter. They end up turning your face uh, inside out. But um, traditionally, they're picked after the first frost. Um, but you don't you don't necessarily have to. I normally just pick them and then just chuck them in the freezer. Um, it also um, helps them split as well when um, when when come to make wine or adding them to gin. Um, has these has some usually has uh, these quite big these one here. Look these big thorns uh, on them. And it has these elliptical um, style leaves, which makes it easy to identify. Some red clover. Um, the flower head's the only edible part, and it's quite high in in protein as far as flowers go. Um, but some people have been known um, to be allergic to it and come out in rashes and stuff. So it's one you need to be careful with. This here is self hill, uh, Prunella vulgaris. This is in the mint family. As you can see, it has a square stem, um, slight hairs on it and opposite leaves. Um, the leaves are edible, but they're, they're not the best tasting. Um, as the name suggests, self heal. This has been used in the past to treat um, all sorts of things. And if you look on the internet, there's lots and lots of claims as to what it can treat. So it's an interesting one, um, interesting one to know. This pink um, flowered plant here, this is uh, 
um, marjoram, which is an oregano. And uh, like oregano, it can be um, added to um, stews, um, and sauces, curries, um, goes well with meat. Um, and it, the leaves are extremely fragrant and that, that gets a bit sweeter as it dries as well. And this is also in the Lamiaceae family. Again, it has a square stem um, with its oval leaves um, in opposites. It's a really, um, a really, really nice one to find. Really fragrant. Nice looking walnut tree. Here we have uh, elder or Sambucus nigra. And you can see the, the fruit here, although it's not ripe. Yet this will turn a very dark purple to almost black colour. Um, and they are somewhat toxic and need to should really be processed, although sometimes you can get a, away with the odd um, one or two. But these make a nice uh, wine. Um, and prior to the to the berry being there, it would have had um, a large white fluffy flower head, and that can be used to make a, a cordial. Most people have heard of elderflower cordial now or added to gin. Um, elderflower gins become really popular. Um, see the it's quite a fairly distinctive leaf pattern um, so this uh, leaf is made up of um, five to um, seven um, leaflets um, coming off in opposites with one terminal leaf at the tip here we have common hawthorn uh, Cretaceous monogyna and um, this is in the rosaceae family the same as the uh, family as the black fawn that we looked at earlier and like the black fawn this makes up quite a large percentage of the um, UK um, hedgerows. Um, it's quite a thorny plant, so um, some care to be taken. Um, there's also another one, Midland Hawthorn, which is um, very similar, but from an edibility point of view, it doesn't um, really matter. Um, as you can see, the leaves um, are quite a distinctive shape and uh, have this deep cut sort of halfway along the leaf. And this leaf is edible. Um, they want to be picked when they're young, really. Um, and taste, they taste quite nice, they taste a little bit like apple skin. Uh, the fruit, also, uh, these fruits ain't ripe, they'll turn a nice sort of orangey colour um, later on. And uh, they have quite a high pectin content and can be used to make a, a fruit level, which if you don't know is um, kind of like a jerky of fruit. Hedge woundwort. Uh, this is also in the, the mint or Lamiaceae family. Again, it has a square stem and has opposite leaves. Uh, in pairs working its way uh, up the stem has this little pink flower on top with um, some white markings on the bottom lip and although the top lip is hairy it's not as hairy as um, some of the others that it could be uh, that sometimes I've seen it confused with such as a uh, black hound. but this is a uh, you know the leaves used to be crushed and put externally on wounds um, as it's a natural antiseptic and um, I believe an anti-spasmodic, um, but it will help clean the wound and help um, staunch the flow of blood. But if you crush the leaves and smell the leaves, they have a really horrible smell, kind of like an old dishcloth that's been left out, um, overused and left out for ages. Yeah, not, not particularly pleasant. Um, I did read you can take it internally as well for um, internal bleeding. However, judging by the, the smell of it, I'm not sure I'd really want to do that, but there you go. That's very peculiar. Oh, he's heard me now. <laughs> he's off. <laughs> All right, come down, India. Here we have some red campion. Um, it's actually mixed amongst the ground elder, which is also um, an edible. But I've heard people say you can eat the young leaves on this, but um, I've had a look into it, and as far as I can see, you can't. Um, they are, in fact, full of saponoids, um, which can be used as a, a soap, but I definitely wouldn't recommend um, eating it. Here we have um, a white dead nettle. It's called a dead nettle because it doesn't sting. Um, like the stinging nettle. Um, it's, it's not in the same family either, this is in the mint family. 
Um, you can tell by its characteristic, as I keep saying, um, opposite leaves and uh, square stem. And this is edible, like all the dead nettles. Um, the leaves are edible, um, and the flowers are also edible. Um, they make a nice sort of colourful addition to salads. And uh, occasionally, um, there might be a small amount of nectar in it, which can give it like a, a kind of sweetness. Here we have some uh, goose grass um, or cleavers. Um, this has these tiny little hairs on it, um, little hooked hairs, which. Um, it's supposed to be the inspiration for Velcro, but as you can see, uh, it sticks to things, including dogs. It sticks really well to dogs. Um, and you can put it on your friend's back, and he won't know it's there, and everybody else will know it's there. And you can all laugh at him, if you're particularly hilarious. Um, but this is an edible. You can eat the young leaves and shoots, um, slightly steamed or blanched. Um, it's not the best tasting, though. Um, the little seed pods, um, that gets stuck if you've got a if you've got a spring of spaniel you're going to know these because pretty much it's a daily uh, occurrence combing these out of his ears um but these have been i've not done it myself following the disappointment of um, dandelion uh, root as a substitute coffee uh, but these can be used as said as a substitute for coffee um, i'm sure as we all know there is no substitute for coffee uh, but this is in the coffee family uh, the rubiaceae family um, so it would make sense um, but I've not tried it, but um, perhaps I will do. I wouldn't mind getting around to trying it. Um, I think you have to wait until these are probably slightly more mature than this. Um, not brown, but sort of um, halfway in between stage. Do not eat this one. Um, this is Arum maculatum, um, sometimes called Cuckoo Pint or Lords and Ladies because it's a resemblance. Um, to female and male genitalia however if your pint looks like this go see a doctor uh, but it contains um, crystal oxalates which if you eat this is gonna make your day very unpleasant this is her Robert and um, it's quite easy to recognize it has this really pretty pink um, five petaled um, flower it's often seen on the floors of um, and woodlands uh, the leaf is pretty distinctive, has a distinctive shape for it, and it will turn um, a red colour. But the leaves are edible, and they, they don't taste very nice, really, but they are edible, and they do contain, um, you know, some nutritional value. Um, traditionally, it was used, it's been used as a medicinal purposes as well in the past, um, for things such as gargled for sore throats, um, or a tonic to cleanse the liver I believe. Here we have um, Jack by the Hedge, um, Aliaria patiolata, um, and this is in the Brassicaceae family, and um, fairly typical of the Brassicaceae family. Um, it, well, this would have had several um, small white flowers on it, um, with four petals in a, in a crucer, cruciform or cross shape. And uh, this one's a biennial, and uh, in the first year it'll be very low lying, and it has quite rounded um, leaves and then in the second year it shoots up um, and you get these leaves which are slightly more um, reminiscent I would say of a stingy nettle. Um, another one of its names it goes by is um, garlic mustard and you can see why because when the leaves are crushed and, and smelt and tasted and um, they have a, a garlic taste um, with a kind of a bit of a mustard kick to it and they're good for making um, pesto with. Um, the whole plant is um, is edible the little seed heads um, they're edible and the flowers are also edible but this one uh, we're in mid July now and this one's uh, really getting on a little bit um, there's not really much on here I'd want to um, consume but it's, it's a really good one to find and a really tasty one as well just down here this is ground ivy um, and it's actually in the mint family it doesn't look like it when it's in this form crawling across the ground uh, but this is how you most commonly see it in woodlands um, but on closer inspection you can see that it does have um, a square stem uh, and its leaves are coming out in opposites in pairs which was um, as i said earlier a typical example of a lamiaceae it doesn't necessarily mean it is in the lamiaceae family but um, it's quite common but the smell is a dead giveaway on this one if you crush the leaves and smell it, it smells very uh it smells medicinal 
and it is a medicinal really and shouldn't be consumed in large amounts but steeped in boiling or hot water um, it can make um, an interesting flavour to a drink um, yeah and it's said to be good for coughs and colds and uh, treating the lung uh, so the wind has picked up a little bit I know um, the microphone on this camera um, really does pick up the wind sometimes so I apologise if you can hear that but down by the water here and this is where it likes to grow water in damp places uh, we have some meadow sweet and um, as you can see it has this big fluffy um, flower head which smells really really sweet and it's been used um, in the past for the brewing of mead but it can be also used to make a cordial or a champagne um, style wine similar to that of uh, elderflower but the other get dead giveaway on this is uh, the leaves and if you crush and smell the leaves they smell strongly of um, like they have a very medicinal smell similar to um, something like germline or savlon or deep heat um, something like that um, and uh, it's full of um, salicylic acid and um, salicylic acid gets its name from a uh, Salix, which is um, the Latin term for, uh, you can see it gets stuck in ears really well as well, uh, the Latin um, word for willow. And the salicylic acid has been used to, um, in the process of making uh, aspirin. And I've heard people say that um, you can chew on the bark of willow or uh, and it has pain killing um, abilities, but I've looked into it, I'm not too sure. What I've, what I've read it seems like it's more of a derivative of. Um, Aspirin is all quite confusing, I'm not a chemist, but I, it doesn't seem like to me that it's going to have much in the way of pain killing effects. Just taking you in for a closer look, you can see the flowers and uh, the actual leaf uh, pattern and structure. I think probably um, other than the shape of the leaf itself, um, these tiny little uh, leaflet things are very distinctive. As soon as you see these, um, you know, it's a dead giveaway. They, as you can see the butterflies really seem to love it as well. Here's one I'm sure um, plenty of you will recognise, it's called Forget-Me-Not, it's in the Borogenaceae family. It has this lovely pretty blue uh, five petaled flower with a yellow centre and uh, it's only the flower that we're interested in. Uh, the flower is edible and it's not going to give you much of a meal um, but it does look uh, nice if you're, if you're doing, we've got a hoverfly coming in there, it does look nice if you um, if you're baking, adds a bit of colour to um, cookies or um, biscuits. Uh, it can also be added to salads. Um, and um, the other thing I've used for is uh, ice cubes. You can put it in, freeze it in the centre of an ice cube, and it looks quite nice uh, bobbing around in your drink. This is called ribwort plantain. Not to be confused with the, the banana plantain, um, but the leaves are edible. They could be uh, steamed or um, stir-fried. They have um, uh, been known to have several health benefits and full of uh, antioxidants. But uh, they're also good for, um, if you get stung by a stinging nettle, you can rub this on it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to work, unlike the dock leaf, which is... Um, placebo effect really. Uh, most people have seen this, I mean it's very common in grasslands and also has this um, quite distinctive um, flower head um, which can be more importantly can be used like a like a little gun to shoot things. This here is Herb Bennett, um, sometimes called Wood Avens and uh, she's got five um, yellow petals to its flower and this um, seed head's quite characteristic you often see this a lot more than you do the flower um, and its leaf um, kind of has this almost similar to that of a um, strawberry plant I think uh, but its leaves are edible although they don't really taste of anything um, but it's been um, said if you to make a tonic out of it it's good for the, the liver the stomach and uh, the intestines but really the best, part, um, the best part about this plant is the root. If I were to pull it up, um, it smells strongly of, uh, of cloves. And uh, you can use it the same as you would cloves. Um, it goes well in uh, making mulled wine 
or um, you know mix them with an oil to uh, treat toothache. It can be all too easy to overlook um, some of the more common ones when we're out trying to find um, wild edibles but this one here I'm sure you've all seen and probably felt uh, it's the stingy nettle and it's in the urticaceae family and uh, for a green uh, leafy green it's um, a very good one uh, it has a very high protein content um, for a leafy green also um, it's full of vitamins um, A, B and C I believe and it can be boiled up and eaten uh, similar to you would spinach although that will um, kill off some of the vitamin content um, but I've also made it in wine it makes a nice wine and um, people use make it into soups and um, probably one of the best ways to eat it is just to slightly singe the hairs off and by applying heat over a fire uh, and then it tastes quite nice to the top few and um, you can actually use your fingertips to pick off um, the leaf and it, it shouldn't sting you on the fingertips and just by giving it a, a bit of a roll around you can um, get rid of the little stingy hairs the little hypodermic needle type things and then you can eat it and it won't sting you here's one I'm sure you'll all recognize uh, this is the dandelion um, it gets its name from the French uh, Don de Leon uh, meaning the teeth of lion and you can see that uh, in the leaf sort of somewhat resembles um, lion's teeth and the young leaves are edible um, although slightly bitter they're quite nice in salads I think and um, arguably somewhat of a superfood um, they're very nutritious and uh, definitely shouldn't be overlooked um, but the flower heads um, are also edible um, they can also be steeped in um, hot or boiling water and when mixed with um, honey actually can make quite a nice tea uh, the roots are also edible as well and they've um, been used as a substitute coffee although don't go into it thinking it's going to taste much like coffee because it, it doesn't really but they can be dug up and dried out and uh, roasted and ground and then used um, the same way as what you would um, coffee so it's a it's a really good one to know Wow this is silverweed and um, it gets its name uh, it's common name silverweed because the underside um, has this kind of um, silvery shimmery effect to it uh, the top side can also have it as well but um, it's not as prominent um, has quite a distinctive leaf um, pattern and structure and uh, the feel of it as well has this kind of lubricating kind of film um, and it can be used on hot spots and blisters whilst walking um, to help uh, reduce the friction and people also put the, the the leafy part in their in their boots and um, it's supposed to help absorb sweat um, but the, the leaves can be used in a tea and have been used in tea for quite some time it's said to have several health benefits and the root can also be eaten and that's often um, dried and ground up as well and can be used in various different ways then uh, but this will have like a yellow five uh, petaled flower um, usually round about now though I'm not seeing any at the moment but um, between June and September sort of time uh, the wind is picking up a little bit now so hopefully you can hear me okay um, but we found quite a lot and um, covered quite a lot of plants in quite a short space of time and didn't necessarily go into great depth into every plant we looked at so if you're going to go out foraging these plants do please get um, a good identification guidebook and um, if you want to add anything in the comments below uh, please do um, other than that take care of each other and uh, yeah until the next time